doing the voice of Jewel the Beetle for um, Sonic Revolution sometimes, but um, yeah, I've also done other stuff outside of that. Um, yeah, there's some other projects I've participated in, like student films, comic dubs, etc. So, yeah. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Otherwise, I can start talking about some of the other voice acting work that I have done and, yeah, how it was recording behind the scenes, basically. Yeah. So, first off, um, I'm going to talk about my voice work that I have done for Gabaleth comic dubs. Um, you may have seen some stuff from Gabaleth that I have voice acted in, like, I have voice acted Minna in a comic, Princess Daisy, Princess Sada, a slew of other characters. And yeah, it was kind of exciting for me <laughs> to do that. So I got to try out my hand at coming up with some voices for characters that don't really speak much or didn't have a voice at the time. So it allowed me to be creative, kind of step out of my comfort zone a little bit. And also it allowed me to practice acting as a character who did have a pre-established voice, like Princess Daisy, I had to tone her down for some scenarios because normally she's a big, upbeat, bubbly character. But for some scenarios, I had to kind of tone her down because she was asking a question to someone else. So, yeah. Voice acting isn't just about being able to do impressions. It's about being able to um, act. That's why it's called voice acting you know it's in the name um additionally i have also done work for a podcast called the traffic lights trio this was actually one of my um earlier voice acting works outside of like sonic revolution so this one was a podcast so i recorded my lines there was a script and it's actually out on spotify for you to listen to yeah it's a great story <laughs> for families all ages. So that's another enjoyable one. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have also voice acted in a Roblox game known as Daybreak. Um, this is probably the um, work that I have been most well known for. And Daybreak is kind of like Dead by Daylight, but it is like, you know, there's more than one survivor. And then there is like, it's an asymmetrical game. So basically, the survivors have to power up the generators and escape. So I have voiced one of the enemies and some of the player character and some of the like survivor characters for that too. Yeah. So I'm not given like a like a voice, like any voice directions for the characters. I just for those characters, I basically designed voices based off of their personalities and their character designs. So for example, Taylor is more laid back. Um, they're a tutor, so I kind of made them sound smart a little bit. <laughs> and Jan, it has a more of a cutesy design, so I decided to give her a little bit of a higher pitched voice. Um, for Daejung, um, I kind of gave him a deeper voice, like I went deeper into my register for that. So Kiara is just a bubbly character. She's just the life of the party, so I kind of gave her a voice to reflect that. Mm, yeah. So moving on to the topic of student films, um, I've also worked with my friend Space Pancakes on one of their student films for SVA, Fear of Expulsion. I voiced the character of Melanie for that. Um, so basically, I was kind of given some examples of characters that already had voices like Luz from the Owl House, like a character from Luca. And so additionally, I was given like <laughs> an example of like my previous voice acting to kind of go off of for the voice, too. So I kind of fused those takes together into one voice. And then we have Melanie's voice. Yeah. Let's see. So if you yourself are getting into voice acting, um, I would recommend, um, you know, finding a soundproof area. Back when I started voice acting, a huge mistake that I made when I was first starting was voice acting in an open room. Um, 
Another thing you don't want to do when voice acting is um, using your built-in microphone. Like, it's fine if it's good, just most directors don't want that. They want an external microphone. Um, I personally use the AT2020 USB microphone by Audio-Technica, and that basically just plugs right into my computer, and that way I can just voice act. <laughs> yeah, without having to invest in a bunch of fancy XLR cables and whatnot. Um, at the moment, I do not have an external audio interface like a Scarlet Solo. So I do all of my audio post-processing in GarageBand or Logic Pro. It depends on the project sample rate. That's a very advanced thing. I will not get into that. Um, but yeah. You don't need like a super fancy audio software like Logic Pro. Um, before I got Logic Pro, if a project needed like a different sample rate or whatever, I used Audacity, which is like a free software. <laughs> GarageBand is also free if you're on a Mac, but it only records at a certain sample rate. So, yeah. <laughs> so after you have gotten... um. <laughs> After you've gotten like a soundproof room, yeah, the mic is the next thing you need to worry about. Um, I would recommend the mic that I'm using right now, but like there's other mics out there. But the Audio Technica um, ET2020 um, works best for what I have to do. So make sure to research different microphones and compare them as well. So. Um, additionally, if you don't know how to act, I would recommend getting some acting experience because you can't just talk in front of a microphone and read a script with no emotion. Um, my favorite part about voice acting is being able to bring characters to life and that involves being able to act. So if you're just starting out, I would recommend getting some like acting experience from like drama club or whatever, or some other voice acting classes and yeah. Does anybody have any other questions at the moment? Um, outside of voice acting, I do make music sometimes, but that is not very important here. But <laughs> I've done work for comic dubs in the past, lots of different things. It's very exciting. Um, on, since we're on, in Sonic Revolution Online, um, I should probably say that... Um, oh, someone has a question. Come on up. At Master777. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello there. Hello. What is your question? I'm sorry. I'm very awkward. <laughs> no, it's perfectly okay. Um, I mean, first of all, I want to ask, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Could be better. Kind of, kind of under the weather. That's good. You know, some yeah. days I feel like that, but you know, <laughs> bad yeah. times will get better. So, what is your question? Uh, my question was uh, kind of orientated around uh, Sonic stuff. You, you were getting to it before I accidentally uh, yeah. hit the button. But yeah. I'm curious. Favorite Sonic character or characters? Favorite Sonic character? Mm. I would have to say other than Jewel, I'm very mm. biased because I've done a lot of stuff for her. I would probably have to lean towards <laughs> Shadow, actually. It's mm. very funny, like con contrasting like my bubbly personality, I would have to say that my favorite Sonic character outside of Jewel would have to be Shadow. Um, I just love like the development of Shadow's character. They kind of butchered him in some games, but I love that Shadow is like an anti-hero character with his own like motivations not fitting like the traditional hero kind of thing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, good choice, honestly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> on the topic of Joel, I've done Joel for some other um stuff. Like if you check Mr. JPEG's channel, um, I've done Joel for one of the comic dubs on there. <laughs> I think it was the summer special, if I recall correctly. So that was really exciting. Um, yeah, Jo is a really fun character. I like how she's very neat and organized and she likes minerals. Minerals used to be one of my special interests um, back when I was younger. Um, 
So my favorite cartoon um, <laughs> was Steven Universe. So yeah, so I'm going to get back into when I first started getting an interest in voice acting. So back in middle school, I used to do um, impressions of like cartoon characters, like the great and lovable paradox. <laughs> so I used to do stuff like that just for fun. In my room, I used to sing to Steven Universe songs privately to myself. I never nerded out about my interests to anyone, really. But after 2019, I started being a lot more public with my interests and whatnot. And in 2021, I think, I saw a casting call for something and I wanted to audition. So that was when I actually started looking for projects on like sites and I started auditioning for them. Um, admittedly, I did not get cast for a lot of stuff that was like super big because one, I did not have a good mic. Two, I did not have a good recording space. I mean, I recorded back when I started voice acting. Um, I recorded with my built-in MacBook mic, but <laughs> people were surprised at the quality of the mic. But don't do what I did. Um, don't audition for that, even though it's really good, because casting directors will frown upon that. Hmm. That's just some advice. Yeah. Um, and then I've been investing a lot of hours into doing this voice acting stuff. So <laughs> it really does improve with experience. Um, I've been doing this for like three years, I think. Yeah, three years. Um, <laughs> which is kind of insane to think about because I've already done a lot within those three years. I've voice acted for different projects and I got to meet so many different people. And that's another beautiful thing about voice acting is that you get to meet other people with the same like interests and passions about voice acting as you. You get to meet other passionate individuals and you get to share advice and whatnot and just learn from each other and grow and help each other. Like, <laughs> I personally don't like to view the voice acting industry as a competitive thing, even though it is is an extremely competitive industry. Um, there are some people in the industry who cheer other people on when they get cast for a role or help boost each other up. And I think that's the side of the voice acting community that I'd really like to highlight. <laughs> While it is very competitive behind the scenes, just celebrating other people and their accomplishments is another thing that it's honestly extremely worth it while you're voice acting. Mm. So, yeah, let's see. Am I missing anything else? I am planning on like starting. PNG tuber activities soon. Oh, another thing. All right. Go ahead. You're the only one here. So, round two. Hello. Yeah, uh, hi again. Um, Hello again. I, so, I remember question? what my initial question was because oh, I forgot ahead. it. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was, um, I was just kind of curious. Um, what drew you so much to the role of jewel so often so oh this is a very complex one because when i auditioned um i had absolutely no knowledge of the idw comics and so after i got cast i started reading about the character and her personality and i re i read the comics to learn about jewel so I actually read like the Tangle and Whisper issues. I read everything that Jewel appeared in and what the IDW, yeah, voice crack, what the IDW staff had to say about Jewel and like her favorite food and whatnot. And so some special fun facts about her. And so I started reading about her and then I learned that Jewel, even though she is a smaller supporting character, um, she is learning and growing and becoming more confident and she's getting over her nervousness issues and her and being self-conscious about herself. And Joel is just a constantly developing character. That's kind of what draws me to portraying her so much because Joel has a lot of character development in the comics and 
when I, whenever I want to play Jewel, I want to kind of illustrate that Jewel is just a constantly growing and developing character. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. She she's certainly a uh, a highlight of I know you. She is. I w- she is so underrated, honestly. Like people mostly focus on Tangle and Whisper, but then shove aside that the char- the character development and growth that Jewel has gone through. So yeah, yeah and I, I'm glad whenever people can can show her some appreciation because she's easily my favorite like uh-huh. Sonic character. I'm glad you think so too. Yeah. Yeah, thank it always so makes much, you smile. Master. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. All right. So, yeah, I hope Jewel gets more appearances in the comics because reading her character arc and learning about her when I was still <laughs> brand new to the character, it's one of my favorite things about Jewel. All right. We have a question from Yoshi Tales. Let's go. Huh? Hello, oh, hello, hello. Hey, Viv. It's, I don't think we get to interact as much, but how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I think this is our first time meeting. Um, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, so I guess my, my curious question is, what do you, uh, who else do you voice, voice act for? Well, what other characters do you voice? Besides well, Jewel, yeah, I'm being curious. Um, do you mean? Um, so I'm gonna talk about some it things. Be, it outside could be of- Sonic wise, or in, or or other or other communities. Sorry, Blah. yeah, can't speak. Outside of Revel, um, I have done voice work in the past for Gabaleth comic dubs. Um, I've done. I've talked about this in the beginning of the um, meet and greet. I've done Princess Daisy for some comics. I've done Professor Sada, Midna, basically a wide array of characters for um, Gabaleth comics. Um, they do Nintendo comic dubs, and they're really hilarious to see. Um, the channel is owned by two brothers, and they put a lot of passion into editing these comics and the voice lines. Um, um, another thing I have done is for the Roblox game Daybreak, I voice... Um, Three of the survivor characters and one of the killer characters. Um, additionally, I have done Miss Yellow for the podcast, The Traffic Light Trio. That's not one I talk about a lot. Melanie in the student fear, um, in, in the student film Fear of Expulsion, bleh, by Space Pancakes. Um, it's an SVA film and it's really good. Um, yeah, you should check those things out. Definitely. But that's some other stuff I've done outside of Revo. Mm. Uh, I see. Well, thank you for answering my question. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day. All right. You too. Yeah. So does anybody else have any other questions? Not at the moment. I see. But yeah, I honestly see the characters that I voice act as <laughs> as like family to me. <laughs> I know that's kind of weird, but. I honestly see them as family and I want to see them develop and grow. And one of the most fulfilling things for me as voice acting Jewel in Revo is actually seeing her grow and interact with other characters and learn from experience. (laughs) That's why I'm always happy whenever I get to reprise a role (laughs) in any context. Reprising a role allows you to kind of build up on a character and kind of develop their personality a little bit more. Yeah. It's honestly so great to see a character that you have voiced before um, kind of gain a new aspect to their personality that you've never seen before. And voice acting is kind of, a, it allows you to constantly change your perspective on a lot of things that you would have never thought were possible before. Hmm. Like, <laughs> before I was voice, before I started actually voice acting, um, I never realized how much work actually goes into voice acting. Like, I just thought that the people behind the microphone did a funny voice and that was it. But then after I started voice acting, I realized there's a lot more that goes into it. You um, have to (laughs) network with other people. You have to be professional behind the scenes. Like, you can still have fun and be professional at the same time. I mean, I do that all the time. I mean, I'm like the goofiest person around normally, but 
you would be surprised how seriously I take my job behind the scenes. Yeah. Voice acting can really open a lot of doors for people. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm really thankful and proud of being a voice acting. It's a honestly really rewarding experience to be able to bring characters to life and to portray all these different kinds of characters um it really makes me happy it's a really rewarding experience so um in the future um i would consider looking at other voice actors for experience and for mentorship for a career option Hmm. yeah let's see any questions it's okay that's fine let's see what else can i um right i think um, if we have time, I should probably showcase some of the past stuff that I have done. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think my computer has a sound capture, so I really can't showcase any of that. I've tried setting it up, and unfortunately, it didn't work, so I cannot actually showcase anything, but I would definitely recommend checking out um, <laughs> the Traffic Light Trio on Spotify. And I would also, <laughs> I've said this so many times, I'm sounding like a broken record. To those of you who are listening to the recording, I am so sorry. <laughs> um, Let's see, what else? Again, Mr. JPEG's channel, if you're looking for more Jewel stuff outside of Revo, um, I would recommend checking out the IDW summer special there. Um, additionally, um, I have a lot of other fun Jewel things coming up, so look forward to that. Yeah. Also, wait, one thing I totally forgot to mention. Wait, <laughs> I've been mixing up the thing. If you check the channel of Chaos of the Protectors, you'll see that I've voiced Jewel in the Endless Summer special um, comic dub on there. Um, yeah. Um, if you do check Mr. JPEG's channel, I think you will see some other, some other stuff. <laughs> Wait, I'm so scatterbrained. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? There is something else I've voice acted in for Jewel. Da -da -da -da. I just have to find it. I'm so sorry, you guys. Aha! Yeah. There's something else I'm voice acting for Jewel as well, but I'm not going to talk about it. You are, you are just going to have to wait. It's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, more Jewel content. Yippee. Yay. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I tried to catch fog the other day, but I missed. Ha 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 ha. Um, hum, 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 hum. What else can I talk about? There's so much that I do know about, but I cannot talk about. And I think one difficulty as a voice actor is being able to contain the excitement for the things that you're going to do in the future, but you can't tell anybody about them because one, either like contract reasons, we are all familiar with NDAs, correct? That is one thing you will have to deal with if you decide to go in the voice acting career route. Um, NDAs are one thing and you know, they can either be like written out or non-spoken. So most of the stuff that I'm doing is actually non-spoken NDAs. So yeah, I have to contain my excitement about the stuff because what's the good in like building excitement for something if you spoil it early? Like if you say, hey, I'm working on this. Oh my goodness. Wow. It won't be a surprise anymore. There's no fun in that if you like spoil a surprise early. It's like telling somebody on their birthday party, hey, I'm getting you a brand new OLED Nintendo Switch. You know, that is no fun for the person who is going to have their birthday party in like three days. And you're already telling them <laughs> that they're getting something that they've been looking forward to. It just spoils the reaction on the day of. Yeah. Um, I can talk about some of my hobbies outside of voice acting um so voice acting is i'm doing it kind of at a semi-professional level um i'm not making enough money to like kind of like make a get my own house or whatever but um sometimes i do make money from it um i will not be going into depth about how much i make because 
<laughs> that is personal information, but I can talk about some of the stuff I do outside of voice acting. So you all want to get to know more about me. <laughs> well, I'm having a debut stream um, soon. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a date in which I can actually do that. But I can discuss some other hobbies that I have done outside of voice acting. So um, I do sometimes play the piano um, as I am a college student, but I am not very good at it. Um, piano is my secondary instrument. I'm a voice student in college. Um, another thing I do that's not very musical is um, drawing. I do draw traditional art. You may have seen some traditional art on my Twitter about some things. So that is another exciting thing that I like to partake in. Mm. Um, additionally, um, I do make some original characters and I do come up with voices for them. <laughs> um, I wish that one day I could have the opportunity to like draw little comics for, with my original characters and actually get to um, bring them to life <laughs> and whatnot. Um, I really need to design more original characters, but sometimes I don't know exactly how to design them because um, when I design original characters, I basically have a concept sheet and whatever before I actually start designing. And I'm like, okay, this is the concept that I want this original character to have. And then I kind of just visualize the character in my head or try to come up with a design that I like. And then I just draw it, honestly. <laughs> my two most prominent OCs are Nightmare and OCs. Um, Fantasia, um, she is a little scamp. Um, she's very mischievous and she's very energetic. As compared to my other Nightmare and OC, Ida, she's a lot more chilled and laid back and relaxed. But <laughs> I have given them um, little backstories. Um, writing backstories is not kind of my strong suit. But <laughs> for Ida, I have like a whole backstory planned out for Fantasia. Um, <laughs> I need to work more on like specific elements of her character that will make her more compelling. Um, um, fun fact, I also do video edit sometimes at a hobbyist level. Um, if you do tune into my debut, um, I do have a cover. This is, this is the first time I'm telling anybody, um, I have a debut cover coming out, um, after I do my debut stream, um, and I made a little PV for it and I edited it myself, um, don't expect anything professional level though, but I did edit that myself. Mm. Outside of voice acting, I also like playing video games. Um, <laughs> this is becoming a get to know me panel, honestly. So, um, out, you know, I do like the Sonic franchise, but, um, I'm really a huge fan of like Sonic's kind of like sibling question mark franchise. They're not really siblings, but they're right closely intertwined since they're both made by Sonic Team. Um, um, <laughs> it's Nights into Dreams. I really like the Knights franchise. Um, here's a fun fact. I have um, A-ranked the entirety of Nights into Dreams <laughs> with a Switch Pro controller connected to a Windows 7 computer. <laughs> Absolutely archaic. Absolutely archaic. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I, I just saw a question. Two questions. I'm so sorry. Um, Hatmaster777 asks, when are we going to get a dual mini series? Oh, geez. That would be so fun to do. I don't know when a dual mini series would ever take, would ever take place, but I would love to see the IDW team, um, make a dual mini series. <laughs> but, yeah, that's one thing that I would love to see. I would love to see Jewel get more character development. She is very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> um, another one by Dino Kaiju. Hi, Avib. Hope you're doing well. Don't know if this was asked to you, but how did you get into the IDW Sonic comics? Also, do you read it physical or digital? Um, I read the comics digitally. Um, I actually started reading the IDW comics. Um, after I started, um, doing things for jewel um so um to learn more about jewel and to learn more about the world of the idw comics 
um, I started reading them and I actually found myself enjoying them. So I still keep up to date with them from time to time whenever I'm able to access those. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, oh, given that you're a fan of the Knights franchise, have you ever considered voicing Knights? Um, I have done, um, I've been practicing my Knights impression a lot. Um, I've just never gotten the chance to actually do it in like an actual dub or whatever. Um, so getting to voice knights in any like capacity would be really fun for me. Um, <laughs> I honestly hope Sega makes another knights game. Please, I want to see Riala again. He is like my number one comfort character. I swear to, <laughs> I swear to you. <laughs> He may be a villain, but <laughs> he is a comfort character to me. Yeah. I bet Sydney would love to hear that she also plays the piano. Yeah. Um, Sydney does play the piano too. Um speaking of that, um I am I'm in the process of like fine-tuning an arrangement of like something, and Sydney actually played a little bit of it, so <laughs> I could actually see, you know, what what um, I could fix in the arrangement to make it a little bit easier to play because at the state that the arrangement's at right now, I'm planning on probably making it a piano duet. <laughs> Just because um, I showed the arrangement to my accompanist once and he said, there is no way that any human pianist would be able to play those jumps you have written in the bass line at the tempo that you're writing it at. So... Yeah, you also did a duet um, with Angie as as both Jewel and Knights. Yeah, I was Jewel in that cover and Angie was Knights, um, which was really cool to see because we've actually been planning it for a long time and we managed to get it out near um, Knights' anniversary. So that was very exciting to see. <laughs> we worked very hard on the cover. Um, so I'm very happy to see that the cover like actually came to fruition and we were able to make it work and we produced something great in the world. Yeah, golly. I really need to do more song covers as Jewel. Um, one great thing about voice acting, another thing, um, is being able to like practice your character voice in different con contexts, you know, not just acting, but being able to sing as them as well. Um, <laughs> you have to be careful when you're singing using particularly, um, hard character voices to perform. Um, I would recommend taking breaks during recording sessions. You know, if you're in a particularly long recording session or just any recording session in general, please have some water with you. <laughs> I know that sounds like common sense, but even I forget to do it sometimes. And I'm just like, no, I can keep going. I'm good. And then I end up not being able to speak for the next few days, which is like bleh. So if you're thinking about getting into voice acting, make sure you take care of your voice. It is your instrument. It is your moneymaker. Um, your voice is a very powerful thing. Yeah, it can help you a lot. Let's see. The art by Leah is amazing too. Yeah, Leah worked very hard on the thing. Wrong channel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay another question by dino kaiju um were there any other sonic characters that you wanted to do aside from jewel um hmm, that's a very good question i have not really um thought of voices for the other son like the other idw characters but um <laughs> they all seem really fun to voice um when i was browsing on casting call um club this is where sometimes i find my projects to do um sometimes i look for sonic projects on there um and sometimes i see like a character called nicole the hololinks in the like one of the, as one of the characters to audition for um and so yeah nicole um honestly seems like a really cool character um <laughs> She's a holographic Lynx. How could you not love her? So cool. Honestly, if I ever got the opportunity to come up with a voice for Nicole, 
Um, that would be really fun to see. Also, I kind of relate to Nicole in the fact that my um, like s- character, like my persona is kind of like a digital kind of character. So <laughs> she's a digital music fairy. She's not human. And so basically I can kind of relate to Nicole in, in that way because she I, she's like <laughs> an artificial intelligence kind of thingy. And whatnot. Yeah. Wait, Nicole does have a voice. I'm I'm like looking at the wiki page for Nicole. <laughs> um, yeah. Some directors want, you know, people to come up with their own voice for a certain character, and some directors want people to come up with their pe- people to come up with their like own interpretation of the voice and whatnot. So yeah. I like doing both of those. Um, because Actually, one good thing about like listening to um, an already um, established voice for a character is that you actually get to learn more about somebody's acting style and whatnot. Like you get to listen to the way they pronounce words. You get to look more into their accent and the way they perform it. So that way you can learn to replicate it and put your own twist on it. Like, for example, Helen, Helen from... Um, Night's Journey of Dreams was a particularly tough one that I have like listened to before because Helen constantly um, switches between accents um, from an American accent to a British accent and Helen was actually voiced by a kid if I recall correctly so it's actually interesting to like look at somebody's performance of a character and then you can learn from that and improve upon that. Also, as cringeworthy as it is, you can look back upon your own voice acting performances with the like experience that you've learned and then you can see, oh, I can imp- improve upon this by doing ABC, you know? Here's what I messed up, ABC. You can like reflect on your own voice acting experience and kind of grow from it in your future experiences like if you voice a certain character years ago for like a fan dub and then you see another character like the same character up for audition in a different fan dub like years later um you can actually learn from the mistakes you did during your first performance and apply those to your next performance um and your directors will also help you too because your acting might seem natural to you, but to the directors, um, they might want to be going for something different. Um, and you'll never know. Um, sometimes your directors have really good ideas. And sometimes um, directors can listen to you and they'll take your ideas into account. And that can actually end up influencing the final product of something. Yeah. Yeah. That's happened to me before. Um, <laughs> when I was doing a fandom for something, I recorded a couple extra lines because I'm like, oh, I noticed the character laughs in this scene. So here's a couple of laughs, you know? And then to my surprise, um, one of my past directors actually ended up including the laughs in the final product. <laughs> so <laughs> when you do something, um, it's honestly a constant learning proc. You know, it's a, it's a constant learning cycle between you and the directors because sometimes you both end up learning things from each other because a director might not have any acting experience and the actor might not have any directing experience so um if either one plans on going into the opposite field they can get some um, insight from each other and i think that's a beautiful thing about the voice acting Ooh, this is a good one. This is something I forgot to touch upon. This is a very good question. Do you do warm-ups when it comes to voice acting, especially when it comes to panels for Revo? Um, Ka- Dino Kaiju, that is a very, very good question. Yes, I do do warm-ups before doing anything. Before any recording session. Um, sometimes I do end up forgetting, but before any recording session. Yes, I do do warm-ups, especially before the Revo panels. Um, one good warm up I do is lip trills. Like I start from the bottom of my range and then I go up to the top of my range, like, so I do that a couple times. Um, 
I also um, kind of practice talking in the character voice for a little bit just to get into character. Um, sometimes um, I have these little character playlists I make um, when I really want to get into character of like what I've kind of projected the character's music taste as. And I kind of listen to those playlists to get into character. So, yeah. Um, back when I was in high school, um, we did the Little Mermaid musical and I was Sebastian. And um, to get into character, I listened to Under the Sea a lot. And even still, whenever Under the Sea comes on, I just get into character. Um, it's become a habit. Um, I, I physically can't listen to the Little Mermaid soundtrack anymore because I'll just snap into character. <laughs> so um, I learned all the lines for Sebastian and whatnot. Um, and then COVID came. And then the seniors graduated, like the seniors that were playing Ariel. And so then the director comes to me and asks, oh, Vib, would you like to play Ariel? Since, you know, COVID happened and the seniors graduated, would you like to play Ariel? And so I'm like, yeah, sure. So then I learned to play Ariel. And so basically, I'm in, I learned the entire soundtrack. Like, almost, I was in almost every scene, like... <laughs> Compared to like my experience as Sebastian and adding on to my experience playing Ariel, um, I basically was in almost every scene of the Little Mermaid musical. And so I had the entire soundtrack. I had to listen to the entire soundtrack because some of them gave me cues for, yeah, <laughs> the parts <laughs> that I was in. So I physically can't listen to the little, I can't listen to the Little Mermaid soundtrack anymore because I just snap into character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah drama club was actually one of my first experiences with like actual acting up on a stage um i have not done stage acting since um unless opera counts i have done um some opera roles in college um <laughs> it's very different but also kind of similar to um drama club and whatnot because in college they give you like more tips and whatnot on your performance so you can make it look more natural and whatnot. So for my first and only like opera role at this point, so I was basically um, a maid. And so I had to pour drinks in one scene and I am the clumsiest person known to man. So I'm just sitting there like, please don't spill this on the table. 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 <laughs> During rehearsals, I ended up spilling apple juice onto the table <laughs> but during the performance i had to restrain myself from not freaking out and going yes let's go in front of everybody because i didn't spill the apple juice on the table and so <laughs> i just had to play it off normally and then afterwards i'm like i didn't spill the apple juice on the table let's go <laughs> <laughs> oh man opera was fun I wish my schedule wasn't packed um, <laughs> or, you know, I wish my schedule wasn't full and I wish that, um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I had more time to do some stuff <laughs> that I want to do in college. Um, Daino Kaiju also asks, do you sometimes also do improv? Yes, I do. Um, I practice improv as several different characters. Um, Sometimes um, I think of questions that haven't been asked to me before as my characters that I improv as. Um, um, it can either be like as impressions of the characters <laughs> and whatnot. But yes, I do improv, um, especially with my friends. Like we do these little bits where someone starts doing an impression as someone. And then I come in <laughs> and uh, so I have a friend who likes to do the Riala impression and sometimes i just jump in as knights and we start these little bits and i'm like riala you little scamp why would you do that give that back to me right now get back here riala <laughs> riala you're so mischievous today what's gotten into you give that back to me please i want a cookie <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i do improv um, not just as Jewel, but other um, characters too. I can already hear the Riala laugh now! <laughs> God, Riala's voice actor, Casey Robertson, did um, 
such a good job portraying the character. Um, I honestly kind of look up to him. Um, even though he hasn't done anything since 2015, I don't think. Um, if Sega ever makes a third Knights game, I would love to see Casey Robertson return to voice Riala again. Because honestly, he did such a very good job portraying the character. Like, he made him sound sinister and goofy at the same time. And then in some scenes, you can see that Riala feels genuine fear when talking to Wiseman. And I think those little subtleties in emotion that the actor is able to perform and <laughs> it just really brings like Riala to life. It makes him seem like such a believable character, you know? Mm. Casey Robertson is honestly a very talented voice actor and I'm very sad that we haven't been able to see much of him. Oh yeah, <laughs> because there's a lot of Sonic fans here. Um, I feel like I should bring up a little bit of trivia. Riala's voice actor also voiced Caliburn um, in that one Sonic game. So yeah, I would have to say my favorite Sega character like of all time is Riala. No competition whatsoever. <laughs> um, another fun fact um, about me, since this is a... Yeah, oh, Sonic and the Black Knight. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Um, another fun fact about my character design. Um, <laughs> you, I actually designed my character's like appearance. Um, I actually drew that and... So my friend actually drew this PNG of like my design that I came up with. Yeah, um, you heard it here first, folks. Um, we have less than 10 minutes. So um, if you have any questions, please ask them now. Yeah, it's very well made. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That reminds me, how long has it been working on the Ruby fan series that I'm in? Um, I honestly don't remember. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll have to see, honestly. Sometimes I don't remember when I start voice acting in things because I've been doing them for so long. But um, it's so funny when I was, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I did my audition for the first character in that, fame, in that fan series in 2021. I did my first audition for one of the characters in 2021. So... That is very interesting. <laughs> like, I love my characters. Like, I know I try to remember all of the characters that I've ever voice acted for and whatnot. So, yeah. Because I know some voice actors forget. Really, I voice acted that character. So one of the things that I want to try to do is try to remember um, all of the characters that I've voice acted in. So that way... Um, <laughs> whenever someone tells me do you remember your work for um insert very old character here i can say yes i do um because i i genuinely care about all the characters that i voice um and i love it when voice actors still remember like even the most obscure characters that they voice um um this is a quality from brendan hunter that um kind of inspired me because Brendan Hunter still remembers whenever he did Judgment Boy. And that just kind of fueled me to kind of start remembering the older characters that I've voiced better, you know? So, yeah. I have so much passion for voice acting. And I just want to share the passion that I put into my characters with others. And <laughs> I, I just hope others appreciate the characters that I voice as much as I enjoy recording for them and putting my heart into the performance. And whatnot. <laughs> Screaming my lungs out in my grandma's closet <laughs> for a character. Yeah, it's honestly a really fun job. So if you ever consider voice acting, it's a very rewarding career, honestly. I'm not sure if I could see myself doing anything else for the foreseeable future as like a main career path other than like voice acting and whatnot. Um, another career path I am considering is becoming a sound designer, which is like basically the person who does sound effects and basically gets to sit in the booth and like stomp on hay and whatnot and record things. So that's something else that I'm considering. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What else is coming up? Yeah, it's 2.56. So we are going to end in a little bit. Like we have three minutes left. So. 
I'm going to make my closing remarks now. Um, thank you all so, so much for coming to this little meet and greet. <laughs> this kind of turned into a little bit of an info dumping panel. So I would profusely like to apologize for that. Um, I really enjoyed answering all of your questions. So, so thank you so much for that. Mm. Um, next up, that's coming up. The next few events for Sonic Revo, um, the 2023 convention, the next events for the Sonic Revolution digital convention for 2023. Um, we have tea time with Starline coming up. So <laughs> if you want to grab some tea with Starline, um, check that out. Um, let's see. We also have um, a Q&A coming up with Sonic SATAM Reduced. So, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely recommend coming to both of those things. Tea time with Starline is always fun. So if you want to see some <laughs> great action from Dr. Starline in play, a relaxing tea party in play, um, go to that. If you want to learn some things about um, <laughs> the team behind Sonic SATAM um, reduced, um, go to that. Yeah, but... Other than that, I would just say, um, please look forward to my debut whenever that happens. Um, I will announce it. Um, I will be talking more about myself <laughs> and whatnot, but today is mostly about my voice over work. So go check out the projects that I mentioned here in this panel. Um, they're really awesome. And the teams behind each of those projects that I mentioned, um, Worked very, very hard to bring these projects to life. Um, Gabaleth, um, Space Pancakes worked really hard on um, Fear of Expulsion. Gabaleth works really hard on their comic dubs. Um, the team behind the Traffic Lights Trio um, worked really hard to bring the podcast to life. And the team behind Daybreak and my castmates in there also work really, really hard to bring the game to life um, and bring the characters to life and just bring everything to life make it a great experience for everyone so yeah thank you all so much for coming today and um i'll see you around revo somewhere maybe perhaps yeah bye bye everybody thank you all for coming woohoo yay bye 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 bye, -bye.